Welcome, everyone, to The Everything Show, episode 553. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212 I'm with Chris. What's up, Chris? If you're falling asleep, it's not our fault. No, because I had to turn it off, Super Bowl. I, I'm not a Super Bowl nut like I used to be when I was a kid, and you know, but like nowadays, like I work so much, I don't get to watch football, and then when I'm like tired on the weekend, so I don't usually watch, but... Uh, What's up, Steampunk? Uh, hanging out at the Starbucks in downtown Hollywood. No Super Bowl for you. Um, no. F- football's for fascists. Okay. Anyway, there was some cool stuff. Uh, I'm being a smart. I'm being a smart ass. I don't hate football that bad, but I strongly dislike it. Chris, you want to give some of the highlights of the commercials? Well, I mean, let's start off with commercial number one, which I wasn't even expecting to be a trailer, but commercial number one, literally, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. Um, Unbelievable. I am now psyched for that movie. One spot has turned my opinion around on the movie, like, tenfold. Really? Um, I don't know what that was standing behind John Goodman's house, but whatever it is made one of the most horrific noises I've ever heard in my life. So I'm now completely intrigued to see whatever the hell that was. That's in a month, right? Yeah. I'm going to see that. I'm definitely going to see that. Yeah, I mean, this tri- th- this if you would have told me that this was like the, the quote-unquote in the Cloverfield universe, that trail, I wouldn't have believed you because that looked 100% different. Right. So th- the whole time they're not in the house, right? Yeah, I guess they're not in the cellar the whole time because th- clearly she's there's that part where she's standing – Outside of John Goodman's house. Well, thank God. Because yeah. that would have been pretty freaking boring. Whatever that light was, and then you hear the thing moving up towards the house, and then you hear it start to make noise. I don't know what it was. I, I, I That wasn't the Cloverfield monster to me. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was a different one, but I have no idea. Whatever it was, it was shining like a freaking supernova. So it's probably going to be better than the original Cloverfield. I, I not found footage either. It's not found footage. I, 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 have, I have a theory about what the noise could be. Uh, wow. It could be the sound of many Star Trek fans screaming at J.J. Abrams. Maybe. Uh, there was no Star Trek date today. No. Absence. I mean, the game's not over yet, but... Yeah, but... I mean, all right, so... What we saw in the Day... Oh, no, I actually like what we're going over. That was going over. amazing. Yeah, look, I like this trailer better than the last trailer. I think that was the best movie trailer tonight, the Independence Day Resurgence. That was phenomenal. Uh, that I was had doubts with when I saw the first trailer. I'm not a big fan of the Independence Day series, so it's just not my cup of tea. And you knew that Seth Rogen was doing it about life thing. You knew they were going to show oh, yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But but with that scene, with um, I don't know what I, I don't know what was doing it, but it looked like. Like, tell me if you think I'm wrong, but it looked like one of those ships was literally pulling, like, the continents off of the planet. Yeah. That's what it looked like to me. Like, it was I mean, the buildings are coming up. I'm like, oh. Yeah. That was amazing. That was that was crazy. And and I don't know, man. I think that might be one of the best movies of the year if it, if it delivers. I mean. Did you see the uh, – now, Civil War, when was that on? What time was that? That was, like, in the beginning, right? That actually debuted before the game. Yeah. It came out before the game. But that thing that he had on his wrist was his watch. It was an Iron Man gauntlet that like folded up into his watch. Yeah. And that was it just came out that, that was like the coolest thing I've seen. Yeah, I, you know, honestly though. Oh, I haven't seen that. I'd like to see that. Yeah, definitely take a look at it. But but honestly though, I gotta say, the Civil War marketing has been very lackluster to me. Yeah. I think it's been very boring. They haven't really are they waiting for Batman and Superman to air and then they're gonna start going heavy? Uh, you know, it, that might be what they're doing, but honestly, I mean, they got to pick it up because the movie comes out in like a couple of months. So. What well, comes out in uh, – Well, they did. They did release. Right? Yeah, I think so. So they got they did, They're just waiting for they Batman did, Superman to face well, they, they did release some uh, cool trailers for Civil War, and they released some cool posters. and. Yeah, but they're not really going heavy. Like, the like posters Christmas. look cool. I like the posters, but I just like the trailers to me have just been like, well, whatever. Like, the whole you know, I like the commercial was great. Well, I like the trailer. I like the trailer where where Captain America and Bucky are fighting Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Hulk, Hulk, the Hulk Ant Man 
commercial was great. That was really good. That was phenomenal, actually, that they, they spent money to do that like that. I like that a lot. You have to see that, Steampunk. I haven't seen that. What was it, Hulk and Iron Man? No, Hulk and Ant Man. Ant Man basically stole a Coke oh. from Bruce Banner's lab, and then he turned into the Hulk chasing after Ant Man. And oh. then he and then he got the thing and he couldn't open it because it was too small and his fingers was too big and Ant Man had to open it for him. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. cute. And cute. it was it was the animations from the movies. Like it wasn't yeah. like a made up one. It, it was no, like it was, it was like movie from the movies. Yeah. That was cool. But honestly, Born 5. Yeah. That looks pretty cool too. That does. I was I was so happy when that one came on there. I was like, "Yes." Cuz I knew it was going to be there tonight, but just seeing it it was so cool. I'm but, not a big fan of the Born. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I don't I don't dislike it. It just I'm kind of the Born series I'm kind of meh. That's just my opinion. Mm. Well, I thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah, it, um, it looks it looks better than Legacy. Now, what didn't they show that we were kind of surprised with? I mean, did we? St- I didn't see anything with. Was there Batman? It wasn't a Batman. Superman. There were there were two Batman versus Superman spots released today, but they weren't on the game. Right, that's what I'm saying. During the did, game, it wasn't. The, did you see those the Turkish the Turkish Airlines? No, okay. I only I was looking there for the Super Bowl, not for right. One of them, one of them, it, they were both for Turkish Airlines, and one of them was like, "Welcome to Turkish Airlines, where we fly you to a new destination, Metropolis, right?" And it shows Lex Luthor, and he's like, "I've helped rebuild the city," and it shows like Metropolis, and they're basically building it up. The better one was it was like Turkish Airlines takes you to Gotham City, and Bruce Ben Affleck's in the trailer. And he's like, because of a generous donation from my company, Wayne Enterprises, Gotham has become the greatest city in the world and stuff like that. And they both end with them about to fight each other. So not bad. I really liked both of those. I thought those were really good. Now, what is this thing about he can't use Wayne Manor? Like, what, is something like happening with his money or something, Bruce Wayne? Or No, it got, like burned down, apparently. Oh, Wayne Manor burned down? Yeah. You know in that trailer, the building that he's walking towards that's, like, condemned? Yeah. That's Wayne Manor. Oh, it got destroyed because of the battle yeah, that they it had? Got, it got burned down or something. But the Batcave is still okay. Yeah, it's underground, yeah. Wow. The Batcave looks really cool in this movie. It, it, so it's Wayne a, Manor's destroyed, but the Batcave's okay. Yeah, it's like a different thing. It almost looks like a bomb shelter, the Batcave. Okay. Looks like it could survive a nuke. Wow. That's crazy. So, even more so, he's pissed off. Yeah. Bruce Wayne. He lost his house. Well, Look. they said that, like, he's, he's lost everything but his company. This movie. Like, the company is the only thing he has left. Well, I mean, if he, if he lost the company, he wouldn't have money to do stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, so, just... thank God. I mean, that's, you know, you can't lose that. You that's know. true. And it's not like, you know, what's he going to do? That's the whole thing. Money is finances, everything. So he can't lose his money, you know? Yeah. That's the whole thing. So. Ben, ben Affleck may be Bruce Wayne, but he's gone, girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. Very funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad somebody got my joke. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Uh, um, I was just going to say, so... Basically, Star Wars uh, lost $2 billion worldwide. You know, I mean, we talked about this yesterday, but it's even more so now. Domestically, it's, it's $905 million, uh, million, 961469 So it's almost 906 And then worldwide, it's $2 billion, $8 million. And, and the thing I have to say about this is that there is a possibility that the movie may not go away. And the reason why I say that is while the numbers are really low during the week, I was looking at the weekends and every comparing it from every weekend since, right? We have it made on Friday, right? 1,760,000, right? On Saturday, it made three million seven hundred fifty-two thousand, and on Sunday, it made one million three hundred seventy-eight thousand. So, 
it's basically making what a movie makes when it's a slow period, which is a February, like a regular movie would make when it yeah. first comes out. So if, if it keeps like making like 10, 15 million on the weekend, while during the week it makes a million a day, I mean, we, it could technically be around for like three more weeks, I think, or more. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it could be around through March. I mean, but they do have, a, I think, April 4th release date for Blu-ray. But that's fine. I mean, if at least it could be into the theater to right up into, in March, that would be phenomenal because, it, you know, I'm thinking 15 million, 15 million. I mean, could we get close to Titanic numbers? We're 178 million away from tying Titanic. I don't but to be honest, I don't think it's going to be Titanic, not worldwide. It's high. It's possible. Anything's possible. I mean, let's just hope we get a little resurgence and boom. But, yeah. again, we got time against us. Time is not on our side. Well, it beat uh, Titanic domestically. Yeah, but not worldwide. And that's the thing. The moment, if we could get, like, a couple more weeks out of it, like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's such a sin that, you know, it does like say 10, 15 million on the weekend. And then you say, so you got like a month out more. I mean, we, we could get close, very close to it. I'm, I'm just, I just want it to be Titanic. I well, I mean, let me give you something that I thought was interesting. Uh, this was a theater, Regal LA Live Cinema in downtown Los Angeles. I went like a couple weeks ago with a guy that I know in Long Beach. We went together and saw The Force Awakens again because I wanted to pick on some of the little details. And the, one, the one interesting thing was one of the showings still sold out, even though it was like the end of January. Right. In downtown L.A. And it was um, it was the 4D version of it. It was a 4D version of uh, The Force Awakens. I guess it's adds uh, like vibration and sound effects or something. I'm not sure what the difference is. But the but yeah, there was there was still one showing of the theater that sold out on a t on it was on a um, on a Tuesday night. Which I found amazing even though it was it had already been out over a month. So that's the only thing I can give you first hand information. There's still people going to see it. I don't know. Um, Pride and Prejudice Zombies, I heard, didn't do well at all. Well, uh, I think people are getting tick sick of zombies. It, it only did 5,200,000 worldwide. Worldwide. Well, it's February, too. It's a down period oh, for movies. January is it, it costs 28 million to make, and it only does 5 million. That's bad. Worldwide, that's bad. Yeah, that is bad. It, it looked kind of corny. Maybe it's over the top to the point where it's horrible. I saw I the trailer. Say, Another Matt Smith stinker. I, I was just about to say, Matt Smith must be regretting wow. Doctor Who, man. I'm telling you. Oh, he's got to be. I, I have like, to, because he has not done anything really good since then. Like, I guess like, we watched Let's Go Hitler before. I Terminator. Just, what, I just felt like watching it again, and it's like... He, oh man, he must be saying Terminator Genesis was okay. I wouldn't say it was a great I movie. I liked it, but but the thing is, Matt Smith is like hopeful that there's a second one. I don't think so. I mean, they're taking it off the dock. Stuff from what I, I don't know. I don't know, man. They got to do something crazy with that one. I got. I'm telling you right now, Matt Smith. Someone needs to cast him in a Star Wars. Grab him. Just because. Look, looks like General Louise Coleman may have a better career than he is. I mean, yeah, he's true. She's doing these there's, romance there's comedies. A, there's a character in The Force Awakens that I hope to see in Episode 8, and that's uh, JB007. Yeah, we saw that already, the guy. No, but Jenna Lee's Coleman's career, I mean, she was in Captain America, we know that, but she's in these romantic comedies, and, and she, you know, she may overtake him, box office-wise, eventually. I mean, Karen Gillan is still Nebula <laughs> in Guardians of the Galaxy. So, I don't know, man. Even Amelia Clark is with that movie, generally, was calling himself. But, uh, yeah, Pride and Prejudice Zombies, what a bomb. That's sad, man. 
Well, I mean, it, the visuals in the trailer looked really well polished, but but it did look a little bit corny, and I'm wondering if it's just like over the top campy. Kung Fu Panda got in like almost 200 million already. Well, that's I mean, that's, that's, that was going to do well anyway. I mean, and that's the third one. Well, it's a kids' a movie, so you have a drones of parents bringing their kids to see that. So yeah, but like, I mean, and then they had Hail Caesar, which that got 11 million in. But that, you know, they Yo, the, one, yeah. the first uh, the first few reviews for Deadpool have been really really positive. Yeah, yeah. The only criticism I heard about the Deadpool movie, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Beyond the Trailer uh, YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah. Okay. She criticized it. She said she overall liked it, but she gave a slight criticism. I watched the spoiler free review because I, I I intend to yeah. see Deadpool, but she. In the spoiler-free review, she said that it was uh, offensive slightly to women. She felt slightly offensive, and I'm not sure oh, come on. what she was referring to. I'm just that, telling you what she said. That woman goes off on everything. Like I remember there was a whole big thing when, uh, when um, the 2014 Godzilla came out. And she pissed off everybody because she was like, why doesn't this movie take place in Japan? And everyone was like, because it's an American reboot. What the hell is the matter with you? And yeah. she was like, well, it's stupid. It should take place in Japan. It should. She was like, it should only be a Japanese cast. And everyone was like, oh, that okay, fair enough, fair enough. That's a valid uh, that's critique. That's that's really dumb. Dumb. I mean, no, but like she, but, she said it when the trailer came out. And I was like, what are oh. you, an idiot? Like, what? Yeah. She, well, it was just interesting. People's opinions are interesting. And even though I don't... I don't think there's going to be anything offensive about Deadpool. Deadpool's about boob jokes. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Yeah. She, also, she also criticized it for the R rating. She's like, you could get, she goes, there's so many kids who are fans no. of Deadpool. You could, get no. younger, you could get a younger generation if you had a TPG 13 version. And you could have Axel Foley, yeah. you know, from Beverly Hills Cop dancing around with, with uh, friggin' oversized, like, you know, Disney well, I think, or whatever in like some park. Which well, no, I, I don't. Not, I'm not saying I agree with her. I just, I just said her opinion was interesting, even if I disagree. It's like, oh, if Aliens vs. Predator fought each other, why does it have to be blood? Let's have a PG-13 version. It's like, no, okay, no, absolutely not. She sounds no. like the same type of person who got mad that uh, like, I haven't watched her, so I can criticize her. She but. sounds like the same type of person who got mad that in like Django and Chain they used offensive language, and it was like I have to watch her. I don't. I really can't criticize if I didn't see what she said. But don't even like. Don't even waste your time. Like, don't even. No, I won't. I mean, it's well, she's, like, she's kind of hot. She's kind of hot. I will. But, I mean, I don't <laughs> criticize other YouTubers stuff. I mean, you know, I I, I watch some stuff. It's cool. Well, well I, I, I don't. I don't have to agree with the person's opinion. You like the review because people's opinions are interesting. Right, they're your opinions. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, th I find opinions interesting even if they don't agree with mine. Right. So I thought, well, I thought people, it was an interesting take on it. Even but you know what it is, Steampunk? Sometimes people don't understand that it could be okay for people to disagree. Like they, they have a problem if your opinion. Is not their opinion, and then they go war with you. See, like this is a different era. I mean, people don't understand what an opinion is. It's like no matter what, no one's going to change your opinion. But you well, don't from, have to like fight with somebody about it because of your opinion. So, oh, agreed. And from everything I can tell with Deadpool, from all the trailers and the weird promotional, weird in a good way, I will say, the weird promotional like two boobs video. There's actually a two boobs Deadpool trailer. I'm not kidding. But it's funny, though. But uh, I think they're doing Deadpool the right way. They learned their lessons with uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine because they hated the way Deadpool was portrayed in that. Yeah, that was garbage. That was garbage, and I'm not even a Deadpool fan. Yeah. That was trash. <laughs> so they, they, they learned their lesson, and they're doing Deadpool right. And Deadpool is one of Marvel's most popular comics, so they can't mess Oh, up. yeah. They can't mess this up. Yeah, they brought him back to life because that was stupid to kill him off in the first place. But whatever. I thought it was funny too. Did you see that trailer today? Or not the trailer, the poster? Because I guess they, they put it up there when there was 127 hours left to the movie. Oh, right? I didn't see that. And you remember, remember the movie 127 Hours with a guy, he's, in the, he's, he's stuck in the mountain and, and the rock crushes his arm. He has to cut his arm off to get out. 
Right. They had a picture of Deadpool trapped in a, in, in a mountain today, and he cuts his arm off, and he's just like, oh. Oh, I saw that. He drops yeah. it, and it looks yeah. like a thing of yeah. boobs, right? The thing looks like boobs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did see the thing funny. with the boobs. That, that was that. really funny. I saw that, and I was like, that's friggin' great. Hilarious. Right. The, the fascinating thing to me about Deadpool is – over the years, I like I knew this one girl that was a stripper, and she was a huge Deadpool fan. And she, uh, this is I'm not friends with her anymore. This was years ago. This was like six, seven years ago. And that was the only comic book that she liked was Deadpool. And, and Deadpool fans are very interesting because they're a very niche fan base, but a very strong and loyal and huge fan base. There are people who don't like regular comic books, that, but they only like the Deadpool comics. And I've, I've always found that interesting. I like Deadpool too. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm a, a casual fan of Deadpool, and I think the movie is going to be awesome. But I, um, I just found that an interesting dichotomy that there are Deadpool fans that are not comic book fans, like That's like the stripper, like this stripper that I once knew. And, and I think right. it's because he's like the the underdog anti-hero he's disfigured but he still has a sense of humor he breaks the fourth wall like he, it's goofy but it's goofy in a good way like uh, in the comic books like deadpool he's like i did this in x-men issue 142 or something like he'll say something off the wall and he's self-aware that he's a comic book character and, it's, and it makes it more funny so it makes me wonder, is Deadpool going to break the fourth wall in the movie? I think that'd be cool if he did. Probably. probably. I you mean, know what's interesting, too? They, I didn't mean to cut you off, Joe, but um, they, they've, they've, they do that now in the Ultimate Spider-Man show, where they have Spider-Man breaking the fourth wall now, too. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Deadpool, yeah. I, I got to tell you, I have multiple copies of his first appearance. Well, then you're lucky then. You know, you know, the first appearance of Deadpool, I used to, um, until I fin fell on high financial hard times, I used to have two copies of the first appearance of Deadpool, and I, I sold them both for $80. But you know how much? 3500 3, and some of yeah, that's, that's that could have that could have that could have given me a place off the streets if I just held on to them a year long. See, I, back then, I was a nut. I was buying. I had thirty copies of Spawn. I probably, no exaggeration, the least amount of copies I probably have is five. Well, back in back in January of two thousand fifteen, so, I had two copies of the first appearance of Deadpool. One was in near mint condition, and the other one was in fine condition. And I sold. I think one I sold for forty bucks, and one I sold for eighty. And I'm buying mine were mint condition. I, I, well, near mint, yeah, and 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 that's like near mint condition. It's going for three thousand dollars, and I'm like, God, that's crazy. I should have held on to them. Yeah, I got to get mine graded, but uh, I have a lot. I have, I mean, I, I probably my kids like yeah, that. near near mint condition is basically not not red, basically. I mean, it would, it would even no, not if it's not mint, it's probably a thousand dollars anyway. Well, yeah, not if it. I mean, if it's going for thirty two hundred and and thirty five. Thirty five hundred in near mint, then yeah, if it's in fine condition, which fine condition is do you you know anything about comic book grading? I don't want to sound redundant. No, go ahead. Okay. Fine I used to collect comic books, but I don't anymore, but I, I know about the grading system. Fine condition a comic book is basically you could tell that it's been handled and you could tell it's been read once or twice, but it's been well cared for. And it's usually still kind of glossy, but it's got a little bit of wear on it. And so if you have a, you know, a comic book in fine condition for that particular comic, which you could still easily get in today's price, a thousand dollars for it. Well, in this, in this case, I read one and the other ones I put right into a polyurethane bag okay. and board. Uh, modern yeah, comic book up. reading, comic book reading has gone through an evolution. Back in the 1980s, they graded comic books differently. Today, it's all about the spine. It's all about the spinal wear. In the past, right. you used to be able to say that a comic book was in near mint condition, even if it had some flakes on the spine, but now that's no longer possible. Right. Um, the spine, if it's going to be near mint condition, the spine's got to be perfect. Uh, if it's got like, it can appear to be in near mint condition, but if it's got like one or two wrinkles on the spine where it's breaking the ink, then, then it would be fine condition. Yeah, I, I should get mine graded. I have a lot of comics. 
an average worn comic book is usually very good condition to give you an yeah. idea. It's a comic book that's not torn up, but been read a few times and been beat up a little bit. It's usually that would be considered very good. Yeah. Know, original reference. And um, even in very, and even very good, you'd probably get like five or 600 bucks for it. So, wow. Yeah. I, man, I'm really kicking well, my kids. My kids don't want me to sell any of them. So. Well, no, it's just, I, 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 back yeah, you know you're not, Todd. Yeah. I was hard up for money and I sold a near mint copy of New Mutants 98 for 80 bucks. Near mint. Wow. It was probably like near mint plus. They probably sold it for dramatically more money than that. Yeah. Oh, of course, of course. I mean, the guy didn't even question it. He was like, here's 80 bucks for it. He was like, slammed. He didn't even, he didn't even haggle it. And so I should have known better that if he didn't even haggle it, it means that he was he was buying it for way less. Right. He was paying way less than what it was actually worth. And I, yeah. I knew that the Deadpool movie was coming out, but I was just hard up for money, and I should yeah. I should have held on to it, man. And I could have I could easily use it three grand right now. I'm desperate for money right now. But anyway, so well, was, you still got your um, AmberStreet.com that could donate, right? Yeah, yeah. You can go to my you can go to my YouTube page and donate to my PayPal. Cool. All right. Now don't go. To, you didn't go to the Grove yet, did you? I haven't yet. I haven't yeah, yet. Don't go yet because I want to make. I mean, people tell me it's there, but I want to make sure if you didn't take that trip. That okay. It's there. I don't want you to waste your time, whatever. So, you know. But um, yeah, I'm hearing uh, today it's uh it, the book is being carried other places too. Uh, I don't. I won't, I'll be able to see the website my publisher to tell me, you know, hopefully you can give me some type of update. But uh, other than that, Chris, anything, did we get anything else in the news today or today was just a slow day? I mean, other than the trailers from the game, nothing that I've heard. I know that really. the actors are training for the Power Ranger movie really hard. Oh yeah. Um, other than that, nothing else really. I mean, I was just mostly, um, you know, Lounging around, hanging around, going shopping today. Really, didn't really do too much. I was pretty. I gotta say one thing. Though. I'm real angry. Um, I I went into GameStop today, and they had on the shelf. It says Doctor Who clearance figures, two ninety nine. So I'm like, this is fantastic. So I grabbed Amy Pond. I get. I grabbed the eleventh Doctor. I grabbed the tenth Doctor. I grabbed the twelfth Doctor. I grabbed the Dalek. Bring it up to the register, and the guy's like forty-seven dollars. I'm like, oh, I think you're rounding up a game or something. He's like, no. I'm like, I'm like, but that says two ninety-nine. So he goes over, you know. He's like, oh, can I see the tags, please? So Sharon gives him all the tags, and he's like, oh, this is a mistake. We're only charging two ninety-nine for the twelfth Doctor figure in that set. So I said, well, that doesn't make any sense because I used to work. And all the toy stores and packing out the toys and you would have a set of like say six or five or eight figures or whatever and they're all the same damn barcode they're not individual barcodes or whatever right so when you scan it in you know it's from the set so you can't just pick a figure and say that it's two ninety nine because if you go to scan it in they all scan the same thing so this guy's like saying oh no no he wouldn't even give me the figures for two ninety nine even though we handed him the sign that said Two ninety nine. Back in the day, when I was in retail, when Sharon was in retail, if something like that occurred, like we would have, like somebody would have to give it to the person, the customer, because it was a mistake on the shelf. This guy wouldn't even. I was like, how do you? I was like, you better take all that down. That's like false advertising. You can't do that. You know, I don't know what happened. But how could you? I even said to him, that doesn't make any sense. What, what makes you choose what figure is selling and not selling? How do you tracking? That the twelfth doctor's not selling, but the eleventh and Amy and all that other stuff is. That doesn't make any sense. That's the same barcode. I don't understand. So I was like, whatever. And I got, I left. And I was so well, you don't know what off. figure you you don't know what figure you're getting in the box, right? It's just random. No, but the thing is, they're all the same damn barcode. So what's the problem? Like, how could you how could you distinguish? No, the, this oh. is uh, this is a different series. He's talking about steampunk. This yeah. isn't. Oh. This isn't yeah. the how could you distinguish like what figures were barcode? I mean, that's stupid. That's pretty like I, I, that doesn't make sense. Like it makes sense to me that some figures are rare in a set, but like there'd be the same price though. Like you know what it is when 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 they we used to pack a figure right. Like what when, when we used to open up the box, the way they would pack it is they would say maybe in a box of twelve or no a box of twenty yeah a box of twelve 
all right, there's, let's just say, um, as an example, maybe five Peter Capaldi's and the rest, like one, 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 one whatever, right? Yeah. Every time you get in case, you would always have five Peter Capaldi's, five Peter Capaldi's. So you would have too many Peter Capaldi's if they don't alternate the case, you know? So maybe that's why. Like, there were so many cases, there was a lot of Peter Capaldi's. But you don't, like, discriminate against the figure. Like, I don't want to, the whole set, it's like, are you out of your fuck? I, I don't want to curse, but I was, like, so angry. The sign should have specifically said for the 12th Doctor. Like that, but even so, like, it's his Doctor Who clearance. Figures. Yeah. Figures. Yeah. Not figure. Figures. Yeah. Me I guess it's more, more I guess one. it's, I guess it's more than one of the same figure. Well, I'm, I'm going to talk to Larry about that because I, and, and my other GameStop friends, because that was annoying to me. I used to work for the company, so I'm like, that's bullcrap, whatever. I heard, I heard GameStop is horrible to work for. That's what somebody told me. Well, I've heard stories it was, about was, that. It, was, it, it wasn't nice, the stuff that they did to, to my friends and me. But, I mean, you would think if you would do great in the company, you would be, like, you know, praised and everything. But it wasn't the case with that company. But I don't want to really get into a GameStop bashing because we'll be here for, like, four hours. Well, it seems I to don't be really a no, it's understandable. I'm just saying it seems to be a consistent corporate policy nationwide because I've heard your gripes about GameStop sound similar to some guy that I talked to. I, I, when I'm talking about the figure, I'm talking of a, as a customer's perspective. Yeah. But if you and I are going to have a conversation about me actually working for the company, that yeah. would be a totally different story because like, when I was with the company, I got bonuses. I had bonuses on pre-play percentage. I had the number one selling Spider-Man 2, but that was for EB Games, but GameStop bought us. And I, w I was doing fantastic. So if I'm doing great, what's the effing problem? Like, seriously. Like, you know, the store is doing great, better than ever. I don't understand why you got to, like, make – like, it, they basically take their managers and they, like, send them to all these inventories. They wear them out. They, they make them work 80, 90, where they get so sick – health ones and they really don't give a crap it's like and then they just wear them out to like where they just and then they just they're never satisfied they're never freaking satisfied well and I, and I heard that the managers don't make that much more than their starting employee they don't make they like to pay really low you know i got paid high when i came in and then i got they were complaining that i was getting paid so high but then all of a sudden like i was doing great for my store so what's the difference you know so I, I don't want to get into it, but I, I did have the greatest times in Las Vegas and in Man, you know, in, in Florida. These the conventions that we went, I met Stan Lee because of you know the video game company, and and I met like a whole bunch of different celebrities. So I did have the greatest time of my life when I was going oh, cool. to Vegas I, and all this stuff. But um, you know, I can't I, really say the good outweighs the bad, if you ask me. Oh. I've met I've met Stan Lee and I didn't work for a video game company, but I did it I did it the cheap way. I, well, not cheap, but I did it. Uh, I met Stan Lee by paying for his autograph. See, I, I had a great time playing the video games for anybody else. There was parties, you know, release party, different things, and like at the convention, it was great. It was they gave us so much free stuff, and they really like hooked us up with T-shirts and figures and games. And Nintendo really treated us well. I gotta say, Nintendo you always work, gave me. You work for Nintendo? No, no, no. Nintendo was a vendor for a video oh, game company, okay. and they always hooked up the store managers with the newest game that they had for, like, let's say, like Game Boy Advance or whatever it was, like newest Mario. We always got hooked up. Like I said, we got the special thing. It's his manager's copy, and it would just be like, you know, it's a thank you for, you know, whatever. So they they really hooked us up. And, oh, nice. Yeah. It's just craziness, you know? So, but, uh, enough of retail. I'm glad about it. <laughs> that ship has sailed, so to speak. I don't think I would ever want to go back to retail. I don't think. Right? You neither. Yeah. Sharon either. She won't. We move, we evolve. That's it. So, it's books, it's YouTube. It's the medical field, and who knows what else one day. So, so. 
That's it. All right, guys. That's going to be it for this episode. So you guys have a great night. Take care. Bye for now.